This is a TXT and this is a devlog about a pretty boring update of TXT's treasury. Well actually it's only boring on the surface, as there is a pretty exciting change under the hood. That change of course is the new backend that I announced in the last devlog video. When I started working on TXT's treasury I of course wrote the backend in a language I'm most comfortable with, TypeScript. But now that I have the basic functionality figured out, I want to experiment with a new language I'm eager to learn, Rust. TypeScript and Rust are both very different languages under the hood. Sure, TypeScript gets compiled just like Rust, but instead of compiling to native machine code, it instead gets turned into basic JavaScript. And JavaScript then of course gets just in time compiled at runtime by Node.js. Rust on the other hand doesn't need another program to run. Compiling a Rust project just leaves you with a single binary you can directly execute. Well, Rust of course isn't the only language that compiles into a native binary, but it has another trick up its sleeve that makes it special. Generally speaking, there are two kinds of languages, ones that have a garbage collector and those that don't. Languages that don't have a garbage collector of course need a way to clean up unused memory from the heap. And that way usually is just to let the programmer deal with it through manual memory allocation and freeing. If you ever had a program that slowed your PC down to a crawl by using every bit of available memory due to a memory leak, you have already experienced one downside of that approach. On the other hand, if you ever ran a Minecraft server, you probably have heard about the importance of tuning the Java garbage collector to get the best performance. That's because garbage collection can be a pretty costly operation performance-wise. Rust solves that issue through an ownership system. I'm not really smart enough to properly explain it, but basically the ownership of all variables is closely tracked throughout the lifecycle of the program. With borrowing, you can give other functions a reference to a variable you own just without giving that ownership away. Once all references to a variable went out of scope, Rust can be 100% sure that the variable cannot be used again, so it automatically frees it. Basically, at the cost of some more complexity during programming, you get the convenience of a garbage collector, but without the performance penalty. You also get a really smart compiler that can catch many memory related bugs at compile time. Bugs that in other languages like C would just lead to something like a segfault. Continuing with safety features, Rust also doesn't have exceptions or null values, eliminating huge areas that can cause unexpected bugs. Instead of exceptions, you get a result enum. This can either be OK with some value or error with some value. If you have a function that returns a result, you absolutely have to deal with both the OK and error outcome. Sure, you can basically ignore the error outcome, but you do that in a way that is easily findable in a global search later on. That means that during prototyping you can basically ignore errors, but once it's time to release, you can easily find all the places you ignored errors in to implement proper error handling. Same thing with null. It also gets replaced by an enum, this time having a sum with a value and a none with no value. This again forces you into dealing with what could be a null. In conclusion, you could probably say that Rust forces you to tackle issues head on instead of ignoring them, all while giving you a compiler that is actually helping you most of the time. All this sounded really interesting to me as it seems to solve a lot of the issues I face with other languages, especially JavaScript. So I started to work my way through the official Rust book over a year ago, but never really had a project where I felt confident to use Rust on. Well, until now, rewriting the backend has taught me a lot about Rust and now I finally feel fairly comfortable writing Rust code. To my surprise, I also didn't run into any major unexplainable issues like I sometimes had with JavaScript. But I guess that means that you can actually easily produce correct code with Rust. So I went on my rewrite journey, first connecting to the database and setting up the web server while writing the first API endpoint to be able to log in. After surprisingly little time, I had the setup and running perfectly. The next step was refactoring everything, separating all my code out into multiple modules and once I was happy with that, I started adding API endpoint after API endpoint until I was done. I also wrote some tests along the way, which made me kinda miss the mocha testing library I used in JavaScript land. Rust does come with a native way of testing code, which works quite well, but I am especially missing lifecycle hooks that let me run code before and after each or all tests. Once that was all done, I just had to update my GitLab CI config and write a new Docker file to automatically compile the backend and build a Docker image for easy use. In my last video, I also talked about weird performance issues. 
After finishing the rewrite and trying it out on my personal production database, I can proudly say that those performance issues are completely gone. All request timings are pretty consistent and fast. Okay, but now after having an entire month without any new features, it's finally time to work on some new stuff again. The next big focus will be the chart situation I already talked about last time. This time I will actually prepare all the data for the charts in the back end, so that's gonna be interesting. Well then, get subscribed so you don't miss that, have a great time and see you all in the next video.